Welcome back. You're used to seeing our next guest on the show talking about his series of best-selling shred diet books. Turns out Dr. Ian Smith was writing a different genre of books when he was in medical school. It's based on real-life situations and filled with intrigue, mystery, and a dose of romance. He stopped by recently to talk about The Ancient Nine. Ian, we all know you, including me, uh, as the guy who helps us lose weight by balancing our diet and the whole bit. And then all of a sudden, what was it, like last summer, you said, hey, you know, I also write like fiction novels. I was like, wait, what? What? And so that's what you did here. Your first fiction novel was The Blackbird Papers. You did that back in 2004. That's right. It was great. And I've been waiting. My, my fans have been saying to me for 14 years, when are you going to publish another work of fiction, another novel? Now, I didn't know you were such a great singer, right? So same thing. Yeah, like, you I didn't know, know you were that. such a great writer. Yes, well. Yeah. But that, has that always, has there always been those oh, books in you? I've always loved fiction. I've always written fiction for myself and, you know, outside of that one book I published. Uh, but this book, The Ancient Nine, which is just out, I started working on this 25 years ago plus as a senior in college because I was in one of Harvard's you say, yeah, you say, I love how you just throw out there a senior in college. Yeah. Like, what college were you at? Well, well <laughs> the, it was my experience as, an, as a, a member of one of Harvard's elite secret societies. Mm -hmm. uh, they're called final clubs, by the way. Okay. Um, and this is me. It's autobiographical, based on real events. No one has ever written extensively about these secret societies. Now, they're supposed to stay secret, aren't they? Do you tell secrets? Ooh, I do tell secrets, actually. Oh. Uh, you know, not all of them, yeah. but enough to engage you. But it really all started for me personally. Uh, in the middle of the night, an envelope was slipped under my door. I looked, picked it up. There was just my name and room number. There was no postage, no return address. And I opened it up and it said, the president and members of the Delphi Club invite you to a cocktail party and it gave a particular address. I had no idea what a cocktail party even was as a teenager, right? Uh -huh. um, and I didn't know what this club was. Uh, fast forward two days later, I'm in the locker room because I was a basketball player. In the locker room, the older guys are saying that this is punch season, which means that this is the season that these private clubs at Harvard start inviting potential members ah, to come. Kind of like Rush in, in exactly, a exactly. Okay. Um, and so I go back to my room and I look at this invite and realize that the name, one of the names that they had mentioned in the locker room was one of these clubs. And so I went to this cocktail party completely mysteriously not knowing why they wanted me to go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is like a, it's a story about like like power and privilege. Complete power um, and privilege. <laughs> and, and so when you got there, did you figure out why they chose you? So it's interesting. So um, when I got there, um, it was a cocktail party. I didn't know what one was, but I found out that I had to wear a coat and a tie. Mm -hmm. And there were these young kids my age. I'd never seen people my age acting like adults. They were sipping cocktails and smoking cigars, right? Um, Hello, and, Ian. Welcome. Yeah, yeah really. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, the crazy thing was like the conversation like these guys so these clubs started 1700s the most famous people in the world are members presidents Teddy Roosevelt Franklin Roosevelt the Kennedys, Kennedys yeah. T.S. Eliot the famous poet mm -hmm. Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. the Supreme Court Justice these guys were saying things like I'll never forget this one conversation one guy said let's go to the Bahamas this week and my dad's not using his plane yeah well and what's interesting about this is of course we certainly know that there are lots of folks who are legacies I mean basically uh, you know their parents went to these schools and, right. and their parents are very wealthy you just mentioned uh, you know group uh, the Kennedys the whole bit you came from complete different background single mom single mom brother. I was I mean you know lower middle class Class, working class family I was everything these clubs was not so yeah. I represented the other side of the tracks and so I go into this cocktail party and I'm hearing these conversations everyone's wearing a Rolex uh, this dad's his dad's a I governor bet your timex kept, kept better time my timex kept great time <laughs> it was just ticking along yeah. but but so it was such a unique experience going through the process of joining this club and then once getting in that I thought one day I want to tell the story so as a senior I start typing the story because I wanted all of the stuff to be fresh to me, the geography of the campus, the feelings I felt as kind of a fish out of water getting into these clubs. Yeah. And so after 25 years, it's, it's here. It's all in here and all the juicy <laughs> details are in here. Yeah. But um, you know, you say autobiographical, but it includes mystery, of course, okay. It, it includes, the, the, the book opens up with two kids trying to break into the Delphic Mansion in 1927 and wow. one student disappears. And then there are two very famous books at Harvard, among others, but these two famous books, one was from the private library of King James the first wow. it's actually his book and the other book was a book that was the last book of the John Harvard collection the other books burned up in a fire in the 1700s and one book remained and that book remained because a student forgot to return it to the library wow so Can you imagine what that fee is today right <laughs> so exactly so this character they would pay him actually yeah, because right. to have it. right but so this character which is me Spencer Collins is trying to piece together 
Why this student disappeared in 1927, mm -hmm. fast forward to when he's in school in the 80s, these two very famous books, and lastly, The Ancient Nine, which is a group of shadowy men who are protecting the secrets that are buried within the walls of the club. Yeah, see, and that's one of those things that, that's the intrigue part for a lot of us, because we always hear about these secret societies that are really the mover and shakers behind a lot of things there. All right, so your perspective on all of this, when being in the, in the, in the, the true self of you, as opposed to the, the character, um, did, how did your expectations change or not change about the people that you came in contact with? Because we talk about racial differences, but they're really the economic differences. Oh, that my are, goodness. Yeah. yeah, so these clubs are all male clubs. Um, right now there's a big controversy about women getting in, mm -hmm. uh, rightly so. Uh, very few ethnic minorities, very few, uh, very little religious diversity. So at the time I was there, it was pretty pristine. Now that has changed. But I had, you know, I had issues because I come from the other side of the tracks. Right. And and though I was one of the quote unquote lucky ones to get in, I guess, I felt kind of conflicted because what about other people who were like me and didn't have don't the money? Have opportunities. Right, don't have yeah. opportunities. How about them getting in? Um, and so I, I, for all these years, I felt conflicted about it. And now the clubs are having real conversations about opening up. Yale has opened up their clubs. Princeton has done it. Harvard remains the last bastion of this kind of elite world, and now it's a big controversy on campus. Yeah, but you know, I, I'm going to wrap up with, and this is aside from the book, I wrap up with how important opportunity is and how important education is, because although you've not forgotten where you've come from, I've not forgotten how hard my parents worked to get me where I am. Um, we also know the way out of that is not necessarily um, pitting one another against each yeah. other. It is joining each other. Yeah, and so 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 the diversity of, of, of in the club as it grew, you know, not exactly when I was there, but the connections you make, the brotherhood you make, um, they're, they're still your friends, but they also run the world. And what's interesting is that I feel like people should understand that these clubs are not just about secrets, so there are a lot of secrets. Uh -huh. It's also about what you do afterwards. So, yeah. you know, it's a fun story. There's a little love story in there, too, by the way, that's based on kind of a You're a real writer. I, I mean, yeah, you, you, yeah, you have the, real, there's mystery in there, deal. intrigue, and yeah. then a little love story in the whole bit. So. And, we, and we have a mystery online for people to solve for 2500 bucks. It's a little fun thing. So oh, if wow. they go to our Facebook page, The Ancient Nine, if they can solve a mystery related to the book, they'll win $2,500 in cash. All right. Okay, the book is thrilling. You don't have to learn a lesson in it, but there's lots of lessons in there, and you can have a great time reading this book. All right, Dr. Ian Smith, thank you very much. Thanks for having me, as always. Ian Smith's new book, The Ancient Nine, is now available for purchase. For more information, log on to greatdayhouston.com.